guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're joining me for another of the Core Concepts videos, welcome back. My name is April. I'm excited to have you here with me today. Today's core concept is going to be on mobility. Now, just as a reminder, the core concept series is a back to the basic series where we are really just trying to understand what is going on inside the body from a physiologic standpoint so that we can better care for our clients with acute and chronic conditions. So again, today we're going to talk about mobility. Mobility is simply defined as the ability of an individual to perform purposeful physical movement of any part of the body. Now, when we think about mobility, we usually use the word functional ability, and this is our ability to perform ADLs. So this, the ability to perform ADLs does depend on function of the central and peripheral nervous systems and of our musculoskeletal system. Anytime that we have impaired or altered physical mobility, we are unable to perform or at least adequately perform those very essential ADLs. Now, impaired or altered physical mobility may be due to just fatigue, really severe, severe fatigue, but it could be due to decreased muscle strength. It could be pain is the reason that we're not able to move, or it could be due to advanced dementia. Now, our interrelated concepts for mobility are going to be pain, of which we've already talked about in this core concept series, and then also it could be related to sensory perception, which we will be talking about in a future video. Okay, let's talk about the mobility continuum. So on one end of the mobility continuum, we have very high level mobility, which is what we are striving for. On the opposite end, we have total immobility. Now, most of our clients or many clients that we care for are going to have varying degrees of impaired or altered physical mobility. And so they're going to sit somewhere on this spectrum, not necessarily all the way to one side and not necessarily all the way to total immobility, but somewhere in the middle. Now with decreased physical mobility, we have the inability to perform purposeful movements within our environment. Now, when we think about dysfunction of the musculoskeletal or nervous system, we do have risk factors. And so risk factors for that dysfunction might be your client has a fractured hip and it's painful and the joints in unstable. So therefore they can't move. They might have a severe brain or spinal cord injury. So now they're not getting a communication from the brain along those nerve pathways um, in order to perform movement. You might have a client that has been bedridden or is on prolonged bed rest, and now they have consequences of immobility. What are those physiologic consequences? Well, we know that pressure injuries can result from prolonged immobility, but if you didn't know, osteoporosis is also a consequence so, uh, of prolonged immobility, so decreased um, bone density. Constipation is one that we probably always can think of. Also, clients tend to either lose weight or gain weight with immobility. They might initially gain weight from being immobile, but then eventually as muscles begin to atrophy, the client might lose weight. Atelectasis, pneumonia, we do know that there are respiratory consequences of prolonged immobility. And so oftentimes when we have that client who's immobile or on bed rest, we're doing lots of strategies to prevent respiratory complications. And then also venous thrombosis is another really devastating consequence of immobility. And so again, when clients are on bed rest, that's when you see us doing all of the strategies to prevent VTEs. Also uh, urinary calculi or renal stones those are also another consequence of immobility. Now, in addition to physiologic consequences, there are some psychologic consequences of immobility, which sometimes we don't even think about. So depression, very important consequence of immobility. Sleep alterations also result and then sensory deprivation. So how do we stay healthy enough to not have mobility problems? Well, the first is that we are actively doing range of motion exercises every couple of hours. Now for a healthy client, that means that they're exercising, they're moving around, they're standing up, they're not doing prolonged sitting or, or having a sedentary lifestyle. For our clients that are in the hospital who are uh, on bed rest, maybe that's us helping them do passive range of motion or them doing active range of motion on any unaffected extremities. Managing pain is really important. So clients will never be able to maintain full mobility if they're in pain. So to promote that comfortable environment, really important to maintaining mobility. 
Drinking plenty of, plenty of fluids, especially for that client that's immobile, will help prevent constipation and VTEs. And then using any assistive devices, such as crutches, canes, and walkers, because we do want clients who have an orthopedic, in particular, injury um, to also be able to be um, independent or as independent as possible given their um, injury or disability. So nursing interventions that we might perform for clients that are immobile, so that passive range of motion, turning and repositioning, making sure that the skin is clean and dry and that we are using pressure relieving devices to prevent pressure injuries. Adequate nutrition, so very, very important. We've already talked about nutrition as a core concept but high fiber diets that helps with constipation, adequate fluids, high protein, which helps with healing, um, high calcium, which helps to prevent that bone loss that we talked about is sometimes a result or is a result of prolonged immobility. And then avoiding high calorie diets to prevent obesity, especially with temporary immobility. Encouraging deep coughing, I'm sorry, deep breathing and coughing, that helps to prevent respiratory complications of immobility, as well as use of that incentive spirometer. Okay, guys, that's all for, I have for you today about mobility. So hopefully that gave you a better understanding of how to prevent mobility problems, but better yet, how to care for patients that have mobility issues. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below or reach out to contact me via my email or my Twitter account. Now, if you're not following me on Twitter, there are, is a lot of great content going on over there. I am posting every single weekday. Some of those posts are just inspirational, but many others are test taking strategies and tips and and NCLEX style questions with answers and rationale. So head on over there and follow me if you're not already. And don't forget to check out my Etsy shop for any case studies that do uh, correspond to these Core Concepts videos. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next Core Concepts video.